children so today we are starting problems on quadratic equations remember we have already done uh, solving quadratic equations by uh, factorization and by formula and also we have done nature of roots so today we'll see how to solve problems on quadratic equations now basically there are four steps okay uh, to solve these problems first step you have to read the question very very carefully and you have to determine what quantity is to be found okay you have to you have to see what is asked in the question so what you have to find okay you have to identify that first that's the first step now the next step is once you know what quantity is to be found then you have to suppose that unknown quantity by variables like x if there's one quantity you can suppose x Okay, you can uh, suppose uh, y also if there are two quantities to be found or we'll try to uh, you know, suppose uh, all the quantities in terms of x as far as possible. We use only one variable. So after supposing unknown quantity to be x, then we'll see what are the things given equal in the question. So we'll equate okay, those two things, then we'll form the quadratic equation okay so once we form the quadratic equation we'll solve for x it is one quantity the y is also there we find the value of x and then we'll find the value of y also then after finding the values of unknown quantities then we'll see the question what is to be found out okay what is the question so then we write the answer using the values of unknown quantity x and y x may be the answer or you may find the answer using the value of x okay so these are the four steps once again you have to read the question very carefully you have to determine what quantity to be found then you have to suppose that quantity to be x third then using the given condition in the question you will form the quadratic equation and you'll solve for x and then you write the solution using the value of x okay so to understand these steps now let's take some questions which are listed there okay now let's see question number question number one now see find two consecutive integers whose sum of squares is 61 so read carefully the question find two consecutive consecutive meaning one after the other see if one number is 10 other one is 11 if one is 11 other one is 12 that is consecutive okay so find two consecutive integers whose sum of its squares is 61 so now you know the first thing what you have to find two consecutive integers okay now remember the difference between two consecutive integers is always one if one integer is 10 other one is 11 so difference is one so using that We'll suppose is the first step let the two consecutive integers be x and x plus 1 because if one is 10 other one is 11 I told you so if one is x other one is one more that is x plus 1 okay now Okay, this is the first step. We have found what what we found out. We have to find two consecutive integers. Then we'll suppose those in terms of variables. We have sub taken x and x plus one. Okay, that's the first step. Now next step, we'll use the given condition and form the equation. Okay, so according to questions. Okay, what it says, sum of the squares of these numbers is sixty one. Sum of the squares. So you have to square and find the sum. So square of x is x square plus square of x plus 1 is x plus 1 whole square equal to 61. Now you see this is the sum of the square of two numbers is 61. That's what is given in the question. Sum of the square is 61. So sum of squares of these two numbers is 61. Now we got the equation. Now we'll solve it. Okay. And find the value of x. Then we write the answer. So implies so x square plus 
now whenever whole square use formula a plus b whole square because plus sign is there so a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab b is 1 so 2x only and b square 1 square is 1 equal to 61 now when it is quadratic always keep 0 in the RHS okay so so that you can use 0 product rule so x square plus x square will make it 2x square only 1x that is 2x and 61 comes this side so 61 become minus so 1 minus 61 will be minus 60 equal to 0 because 61 comes to LHS and becomes minus 60. So 1 uh, sorry minus 61. So 1 minus 61 is minus 60. So you see 2 is common everywhere. So divide forward by 2. So you get x square plus x minus 30 equal to 0. Now you use the middle term breaking. Okay. So product is 30. So you know 6 5 is 36 minus 5 is 1 here coefficient 1 you know how to break out the middle term so you can write this as x square plus 6 uh, uh, write in bracket first 6 minus 1 x minus 30 equal to 0 okay because uh, 6 minus 5 x equal to 30 because 6 5 is 36 minus 5 is 1 okay so now open the bracket x square plus 6x minus 5x minus 30 equal to 0 remember there should be two positive two negative okay if there are three positive or three negative then it's not possible in that case you have to change this pair so take common x common x plus 6 minus 5 common you know minus sign will change the sign so x plus 6 equal to 0 so you see x plus 6 is common again so x minus 5 equal to 0 so this implies now apply 0 product rule either x plus 6 equal to 0 or x minus 5 equal to 0 this implies x equal to minus 6 or x equal to 5 so two values we got now check the question so find two consecutive integers okay integers can be positive or negative remember if it is natural number or whole number then x can be only taken as 5 okay you cannot take minus 6 because minus 6 is not natural number or whole number but since it says integer so you have to take both minus 6 and 5 are possible values of x okay so you have to consider both the values so therefore when x equal to minus 6 then x plus 1 equal to because two numbers are x and x plus 1 x is minus 6 so x plus 1 will be minus 6 plus 1 will be minus 5 okay so therefore therefore two numbers are minus 6 and minus 5 this one answer so when x equal to 5 another value here then x plus 1 equal to 5 plus 1 that is 6 so therefore two numbers therefore two numbers is equal to we have 5 and 6 so either minus 5 as minus 6 and minus 5 or 5 and 6 these are the two sets of possible values okay now this is the process how you solve problems on quadratic equations okay now let's take another example question number 2 now again uh, you read the question very carefully it says if two product if the product of two consecutive even integers is 2 to 4 find integers now in this case you are given the product of two consecutive in even integers remember consecutive even integers be careful there is not consecutive integers two consecutive even integers okay their product is 2 to 4 now find the integers so now you know what you have to find you have to find two integers so now you suppose let the two integers be one is x now even so if it's even then the next value must be x plus 2 remember this one because if one number is 10 another even integer will consecutive even integer will be 12 so difference is how much 2 so you have to add 2 to 10 then you get 12 that's why if it is x then x plus 2 if x is 10 
10 plus 2 12. If x is 12, 12 plus 2 14. So conjugative even. So if question says 2 conjugative even or odd, then you have to take x and x plus 2. If you take one more, you have to take x plus 4. If it says only conjugative, then you take x, x plus 1, x plus 2, and so on. All right? Take the difference of 1. So now we have got 2 conjugative. Let the 2, you can write consecutive even integers b, x, and x plus 2. Okay? It will define that. So according to question now, next step. So question says the product of these integers is 2 to 4. So product meaning you multiply x into x plus 2 is equal to 2 to 4. Because question says the product of these integers is 2 to 4. The product means you multiply x and x plus 2. Okay, so what to do? Open the bracket x square plus 2x and bring 2 to 4 to integers. So it becomes okay minus. Now Again, use the Milton breaking method, okay, to factorize. So, take 2 to 4, it's prime factors, okay, find out the prime factors. So, 2 will multiply 1, 1, 2. So, this will not give you 2. So 2 will go, uh, uh, it will divide, 2, 5 is 10, 56 and 4 will not give you 2. So, 2 will go, 2 to the 4, 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4 to the 8. 8 and 20 will not give you 2. Go for the 2. 14. Now 2 to the 4 to the 8 to the 16 and 14. Now 16 and 14, the difference is 2. So we have the 2 numbers. Okay. Now you have to find 2 numbers such a way that when you multiply, you should get 224. When you add or subtract, you must get this coefficient of x. So now you can break it up. So x square plus, you can write 16 minus 14 x minus 2 to 4 equal to 0. Now if you open the bracket, x square plus 16x minus 14x minus 2 to 4 equal to 0. This implies if, x, if you take x common here from these two, x plus 16 you get minus 14 common, x plus, if the minus sign will make it plus, so 14 into 16 is 224, so it will be 16 equal to 0. Because 14 into 16 is 224. Now, x plus 16 is common once again. Take it out. So, what is left? x minus 14 equal to 0. So, again, 0 product rule. Either x plus 16 equal to 0 or x minus 14 equal to 0. So, this will give you x equal to minus 16 or x equal to 14 plus 14 because minus goes to RSS and becomes plus. Now, once again, it says conjugative even integers. Okay. So, both are even integers, so it doesn't say positive, so we have to consider both the values. Okay, so write when x equal to minus 16, then x plus 2 is equal to minus 16 plus 2 equal to minus 14. So therefore, two numbers are minus 16 and minus 14. So first answer, when x equal to 14, then x plus 2 will be 14 plus 2, that is 16. So, therefore, two numbers are 14 and 16. So, these are the answers. Either minus 16, minus 14 or 14 and 16. Okay, there are two numbers. If question says two consecutive positive even integers, then positive even integers, then you consider only x equal to 14 and you discard x equal to minus 16. In that case, but here it says, Conjugative even integers. It doesn't say positive or negative, so we consider both the values of x. All right. Now <coughs> another time. Question number three. Number three. Now it says five times a certain number, certain whole number. Remember whole number. Whole number cannot be negative. It starts with zero. Five times a certain whole number is three less than twice the square of the number. Find the number. So only one number we have to find out. So you suppose let the number be x. Okay. So we have uh, we have read carefully and found out what to be found. We have to find the number. So we suppose that to be x. Now next step. 
according to question. Okay, it says five times a certain whole number. Okay, so five times a certain whole number. So five times certain whole number is x. Five times a certain whole number is means equal to three less than twice the square of the number. So three less means minus three, then twice the square of the number. So twice the square of the number is two x square. So you have to read very carefully. So it says five times a certain whole number is equal to three less than twice the square of the number. That's what is given. So since x square uh, is on the right side and positive, so we'll take this term to also to RHS, okay, and write in the left hand side. So we get 2x square minus 5x minus 3 equal to 0. Because 2x square, then 5x becomes minus 5x minus 3 is there. So here product is 6. Okay. So uh, we have two, two uh, because product is 6, so there are two pairs of numbers. One is 2 and 3 will give you 6. And difference, uh, the sum is 5. Other one is 6 and 1. Product is, uh, product is 6 and the difference is 5. Now, which pair you take? 2, 3 or 6, 1. It depends upon the sign here. If you take 2 plus 3, then there will be 3 negative because minus will make it that also negative. So, there will be 3 negative and 1 positive. So, this will not work. So, we take 6 and 1. Okay. So, 2x square minus 6 minus 1, x minus 3 equal to 0. I told you there should be two positive and two negative sign here. So 2x square minus 6x minus minus plus x minus 3 equal to 0. Now you see two positive, two negative. If you had taken 2 and 3, there would be 3 negative and only one positive. Okay. So you have to be careful here while choosing the numbers. So here 2x is common. So x minus 3 you get. Plus uh, here 1 is common. So x minus 3 equal to 0. So x minus 3 again common, so 2x plus 1 equal to 0. So this will give you, uh, now apply 0 product rule, x minus 3 equal to 0 or 2x plus 1 equal to 0. This implies x equal to 3 or x equal to minus 1 by 2 because 1 goes to the RHS because minus 1 and 2 will divide. But now you see a uh, certain whole number. So since x is whole number, so this minus half cannot be taken because it's not a whole number okay so therefore you take x equal to 3 only uh, you write x equal to minus 2 is neglected because it is not whole number so only x is whole number so now okay so therefore only one number you have to find so therefore the required number is equal to 3 that is the answer okay this is question number three now let's take question number four question number four this came in ICSE 2015 okay now uh, question says sum of two natural numbers is eight sum of two natural numbers is 8 and difference of their reciprocals is 2 by 15. Find the number. Okay, find the numbers. Okay, sum of two natural numbers is 8. So, natural numbers means positive. So, and not fractional. So, let the two natural numbers numbers b x and 8 minus x because their sum is 8 so we suppose two numbers to be x and 8 minus x so when you add it then you get uh, sum of two natural numbers is 8 so when you add it you get x plus 8 minus x it will get cancelled so sum will be 8 so remember whenever sum is given so if first number is x, the second number is sum minus that number. Okay. So now according to question, so we have to make the equation. So it says the difference of their reciprocals is 
2 by 15. So difference of their reciprocals. Okay. So reciprocal of x is 1 by x and reciprocal of 8 minus x is 1 by 8 minus x because you know reciprocal of 2 is 1 by 2. So difference of reciprocals. So 1 by x is the reciprocal of 1 by x. Difference is minus 8 minus x is equal to. This is the difference of their reciprocals. The numbers are x and 8 minus x. This is the difference of their reciprocals. And that is equal to 2 by 15. Question says the difference of their reciprocals is 2 by 15. Now find the numbers. Okay. So first take uh, LCM here x into 8 minus x simply you can multiply so when you multiply then you 8 minus x will multiply 1 so you get 8 minus x minus x will multiply 1 so it will be x okay 8 minus x minus x equal to 2 by 15 so if you simplify so you get 8 minus 2x by if you open the bracket you get 8x minus x square equal to 2 by 15 so if you cross multiply now so 15 will multiply 8. So 8 5 is a 40. 8 1 is a 8. So 120. So minus 2 into 15 is 30x. Equal to 2 will multiply 2 into 8 uh, is 16x minus 2x square. Okay, by cross multiplication. Okay. Now bring all the terms because 2x square is negative, so bring it to LHS. So in writing in descending power of x. So 2x square minus 30x and this 16 also comes this side becomes minus 16x and plus 120 equal to 0 because 120 is positive. So if you simplify further, you get 2x square minus 30 plus 6 because same thing you will add it will be 46x equal to uh, sorry plus 120 equal to 0. This implies now uh, 2 can divide throughout. If you divide by 2, you get x square minus uh, 23x plus 60 equal to 0. Dividing by 2 because 2 is common throughout. Now, again, we of breaking. So, factor is 60. The sum of difference should be 23. So, you, you can directly do it. 3 into 20, 60 and 20 plus 3 is 23. So, we have the two numbers 20 and 3. So, x square minus 20 plus 3, x plus 16 equal to, sorry, 60 equal to 0. So, x square minus 20x minus 3x because minus into plus will be minus 3x plus 60 equal to 0. This implies x common, x minus 20 minus 3 common, x minus 20 equal to 0. So, this will give you x minus 20 and x minus 3 equal to 0. So this will give you x minus 20 equal to 0 or x minus 3 equal to 0. Okay, I'll write over here. So this implies x equal to 20 or x equal to 3. Okay, but uh, x into x equal to 20 is not admissible because sum of two natural numbers 8 so x cannot be 20 so you take therefore x equal to 3 x equal to 20 is neglected because x equal to 20 will not satisfy the equation because sum is 8 so one number cannot be 20 so x equal to 3 so therefore 8 minus x equal to 8 minus x 8 minus 3 that is 5 so therefore the required numbers are 3 and 5 you see 3 plus 5 is 8 okay so answer now question number 5 okay last one for the day let's take question number 5 number 5 it says uh, in a uh, positive fraction okay in a positive fraction fraction is positive so the denominator is greater than numerator by 3 remember denominator is greater than numerator by 3 if one is subtracted from both numerator and denominator the fraction is decreased by 1 by 14 find the
fraction okay so now uh, when you suppose the fraction see here the relation between numerator and denominator denominator is greater than numerator by 3 that means if the numerator is x then denominator will be x plus 3 because denominator is greater than numerator by 3 so you write let the fraction be x by x plus 3 because the denominator is greater than numerator by 3 means denominator is 3 more so we take x plus 3 now according to question what it says if one is subtracted if one is subtracted from both numerator and denominator the fraction is decreased by 1 by 14 so if one is subtracted from both meaning x minus 1 x plus 3 minus 1 so one is subtracted from both numerator and denominator then the fraction fraction is x plus 3 this is decreased by 1 by 14 be careful question says when you decrease numerator and denominator both by 1 then the fraction is decreased by 1 by 14 so the fraction decreases minus by 1 by 14 so find the fraction so that means we have to find the value of x okay so we have here x minus 1 by x plus 2 because minus 3 plus uh, minus uh, plus 3 minus 1 is plus 2 so bring this to lhs so we get minus x by x plus 3 equal to minus 1 by 14 for our convenience we are bringing to lhs so that will be easy to take lcm so x plus 2 into x plus 3 is the lcm so when lcm is the product you multiply this way okay this denominator will multiply here x minus 1 into x plus 3 minus x into x plus 2 x plus 2 will multiply x here equal to minus 1 by 14 so if you open the bracket x into x will be x square plus 3x minus x minus 3 so minus x will multiply minus x square then minus 2x because both will be negative divide by here also multiply x square plus 3x plus 2x plus 6 equal to minus 1 by 14 so x square being positive negative can be cancelled here okay so if you simplify you get uh, 3x also 3x minus x will be 2x 2x and this, this also get cancelled so what you get only minus 3 here you get x square plus 5x plus 6 equal to minus 1 by 14 minus also you can cancel from both sides okay so this will give you if you cross multiply you get x square plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 14 to 3 it is 40 okay cross multiplication so x square minus 5 uh, plus 5x plus 6 into 1 is this 14 to 3 42 Okay, so bring 42 LHS, so you get x square plus 5x plus 6 minus 42 equal to 0 implies. So x square plus 5x minus 42 minus 6 is 36 equal to 0. Now 36, at, uh, product is 36 and uh, sum of difference is 5. So you can see 9 fours are. 36 9 minus 4 is 5 so two numbers we have so x square plus 9 minus 4 x minus 36 equal to 0 because 9 4 are 36 9 minus 4 is 5 so this will give you x square plus 9x minus 4x minus 36 equal to 0 2 positive 2 negative so it's fine so x common x plus 9 minus 4 common x plus 9 because this minus sign will change the sign so x plus 9 and x minus 4 equal to 0 okay I'll write over here so if you apply zero product rule you get x implies x plus 9 equal to 0 or x minus 4 equal to 0 this implies x equal to minus 9 or x equal to 4 so since the fraction is positive if you take minus 
then uh, when you take x equal to 4, obviously 4 and it will be 4 plus 3, 7. So if you take minus sign, what happens? It will be minus 9. So minus 9 plus 3 will be minus 6. Okay, and minus minus get cancelled. So it will be a positive. So let's see. So when x equal to 4, then fraction. Fraction is equal to x. x is 4 by 4 plus 3 equal to 4 by 7. So when x equal to minus 9, okay, minus 9, then fraction is equal to minus 9 by minus 9 plus 3. That is minus 9 by minus 6. Okay, that is, so this is 3 by 2. But uh, this doesn't satisfy the condition because denominator is 3 more than the numerator. It says denominator is greater than numerator by 3. So here the denominator is less. So this is negligible. Okay, so therefore required fraction is equal to 4 by 7. So this is the answer. Okay.